Battle control initialized. Hey people, Five Aces here. And today I'm going to proudly present to you a clash of the titans. This is going to be one of those really huge matches, a real high skill matchup. In the Black Threads, spawning as Russia, we have Mr. Raimundo from the United States. And his counterpart in the purple trunks is going to be Chamberlain, also from the United States, spawning as Ukraine. Both of them are really high skilled players. Both of them are uh, those type of guys who would rather go for like a late game plan, who don't have crazy micro or not, not crazy early game shenanigans. They're mostly known for their very solid late game playstyle. Okay, let's see what they're up to. So Raimundo has opted to secure the Western expansion first with his engineers. He's gonna walk his engines over there and secure four more oils for himself. This is gonna give him some slight advantage at least, while Chamberlain is just securing his own oils. Yeah, Raimundo is, got, is opting for the double NG start, which is gonna cost you a bit. Engineers are not cheap at 500, but it's well worth it if you can pull it off. All right. So Chamberlain is just content with securing his borders, being secure. Now, there are a few things to talk about. First, this map has an incredible amount of ore for four players, uh, for two players. So really what you want to do is expand early. This is gonna give you an unfathomable lead. Uh, let's see what they're opting for. Production tab, okay. Raimundo is tech rushing, which, is, which kind of strikes me as odd, seeing as this is a really large map and you would do better just securing this ore field for yourself. And if you can like be greedy and score both of them. Oh, they're talking about electronic music, come on. Okay, pro tip of the day. As long as music doesn't have electric guitars, it's not good music. It's just the way it is. <laughs> okay, Raimundo is straight up tech rushing. This is kind of a weird start. Chamberlain is going for the standard double refinery build. The only thing is, he's going for the small ore patch. This is not going to yield him as much in the early game, because uh, this ore patch up top here has way more ore than anything down there. This is just a small patch. Okay, yeah, Raimundo has now taken the economical lead by by grabbing all the four oil derricks. Raimundo is playing it like a true American. Eight oils. There we go. You need more oil grabs, buddy. You're not American enough. <laughs> and let's look at the production tab. Holy shit. Okay, Raimundo is straight up going for a tech center. Three harvesters tech center. This is an incredibly tech greedy build. Now, I think, yeah, they're, they're off to a really slow start, you know. I already know, looking at the players, that this is going to be a macro game because yeah, neither of them are known for rushing or for doing any crazy shenanigans. Okay, Raimundo securing this border here with a single flag truck. Meanwhile, Chamberlain has nothing but eco. He's going for four harvest to start. I would go for a workshop a repair pad at this point, which neither of them has. Uh, another thing to talk about is the matchup. Now, this is something that, that can really be interesting. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, the Russians are better suited for large scale maps and Ukraine is better, better suited for like those small, small engagements, skirmishes, uh, micro maps and low ore maps because uh, the Ukrainian faction special, the Paradrop, is incredibly useful if uh, to take out base defenses. It, can, it has a special attack modifier that immediately evaporates any base defense which is super useful on small maps, but on large scale maps with a really massive economy, that doesn't really factor in all that much, right? Meanwhile, Russia has freaking uh, shock troopers. And let's face it, as of this release, shock troopers are broken beyond belief. They do incredible amounts of damage, which is what they're supposed to do, but they're also incredibly tanky, which is really weird for an infantry. And Raimundo loves using them. So, he's rushing an Iron Curtain, which is good. Finally, the service depot is here. 
I was wondering. Okay, first Yakgaard. And neither of them has really scouted or engaged each other at all. Honestly, at this point I would just have gone for the expansion and secured it way before uh, taking up to Raider. He could have gotten out two more oil refineries and he's gotten secured an economical lead, which he hasn't really, apart from those four oil derricks, but that's not too massive, to be honest. All right, Chamberlain is, is pumping out V2s. Let's go into their vision. Yeah, look at this, nothing scouted yet. Uh, V2s versus mass yaks. Okay, Chamberlain is also getting out some yaks now. Even in a Soviet versus Soviet matchup, you need yaks. You need air dominance, you need vision control. Because V2 rockets are completely pointless without, without any support. Now it's looking like Raimondo is, is going for the Soviet light armor doctrine. One thing about the Soviets, they're usually regarded as the kind of steamrolling faction, but seeing as flak trucks and V2s are incredibly potent now, together with the uh, borderline overpowered shock troopers, you can go for a light armor approach, screening with, with mobile flags, flak trucks, and scouting with your yaks, and then running the V2s in to do the damage versus, uh, versus the buildings. Kind of a base raid style of play. Okay. They're having a little banter, and here's the first engagement, very first engagement of the game, seven minutes in almost. Yeah, Raimondo is going to win that easily. Four flag trucks versus two, and oh, he gets he gets rewarded with a bomb for his efforts. Nice. Okay, next, yeah, getting pumped out by Chamberlain. And Chamber has a massive amount of V2s. Uh, thing is, they are easily countered by flag trucks and. They are not going to get in range of the base as of now. There is just too much stuff. So they're both building up their armies. And look at those unit compositions. Mass shock troopers. He was going for rifle infantry uh, before he had tech center. Now it's just pumping out shockies. And they do not only have the best one-liners, they also have the best sustained damage of any infantry. And they're effective versus any target. Literally anything. Infantry, buildings, base defenses, uh, heavy armor, you name it. Okay, Raimondo going mass yaks. And this is going to be the first yak strike. Not scouted yet, nope. Nothing scouted at all to be, to be very precise about this. Four flags, if he, if he micros this correctly, he's going to get everything. Ah, don't clamp. Ouch. Well, okay, he lost one flag truck. It's not the end of the world. See, and Chamberlain has expanded earlier, which is crucial, to be honest. He can get us his, his second refinery now, his third refinery now. And meanwhile, these ore fields are just untouched. Uh, what I haven't talked about, he has, uh, Raimondo has tech rushed, he has also rushed a nuke, which is, well, which is fairly obvious if you're going for a nuke, you're also, if you're going for tech rush, you're also gonna rush a nuke. But yeah, it's ticking down 6 minutes 30 on the counter. Now the flux of Yak are growing and Yaks are kind of, they're interesting in this matchup because they're really bursty. They are, at the same time they have, they have no armor at all. So they're, yeah, they're basically kind of suicide bombers. Here is the nuke for Chamberlain, not screened by any, uh, by any anti-air yet. And they're so fast, the Yaks are incredibly fast. And they unload all their all of their ammunition in a in two bursts. And against buildings, that's so deadly. Because with helicopters it takes you quite a while to, to get through to the uh, to your target and then do the damage. It takes around uh, about six seconds to unload your magazine. Uh, with a yak, they just do it in one swoop. They they swoop in and they haul ass. Yeah, now here's the iron curtain. I'd usually go for the Iron Curtain first, because Iron Curtain gives you so much utility as Soviets. This is way more important than Nuke, in my opinion. Okay, Chamberlain massing power. Now he's going for the first scout with his, with his spy plane. He's not going to see too much, because yeah, he should, have, he should have pointed it more south. Oh, and here's the problem with the, with the Light Armor Company. 
it's absolutely useless versus heavies. Heavy armor. Yeah, and now this force by Chamberlain gets uh, by by Ramando gets cleaned up. Whoa! Jack takes a V2 with him. Yeah, and the heavy tanks arrived all this. It's 1150, which is not too hefty price tag considering the amount of armor. Uh, another thing about V2s is I would usually go base raiding with them and mo more importantly, I would put them on hold fire because look at what's happening here. The flags went in, they grabbed the crate, they went out again and they survived because uh, the V2s auto-targeted and they have no tracking. So you want to hit units when they're standing still, which is why you want to hit Control Z to kind of, yeah, to, to hold, make them hold fire. Uh, I don't see this attack working. I think he has Iron Curtain. Yeah, Iron Curtain is ready. I don't think this is working out too well though. Let's see. Uh, it's not scouted. Nope. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, see, the V2s are targeting the Shock Troopers. This is gonna be very, very costly for Raimondo. Sure, he gets the refinery and he gets all of the V2 rockets. Uh, is it enough? No, now it's in range of the Tesla coil. And uh, you still have to microshock troopers. You have to make them target uh, the enemy de base defenses. Like here, they're just targeting uh, a random power plant. It's not gonna, it's not gonna help him in this engagement. Ah, Raimondo has also started to mix in some heavy armor now, which is good. Yeah, this attack force is getting cleaned up. One heavy left. Good night, sweet prince. And see, he's not really microing it. They're just sitting there. Do svidania, comrade. Ah! Okay. Ah, uh, meanwhile he's expanded. Oh! There was a, a parabomb drop, and the bomblets from the parabomb strike are not strong enough to take out power, and they're not strong enough to take out your iron curtain or missile silo either, so I don't feel this was a very good idea. He wants to follow it up with a, uh, with a paradrop badger, but it didn't really happen. Also, also Raimondo has had some backup uh, engineers to, re to repair the iron curtain if need be. Now the shockies are cleaning house. That's what happens, man. Mass shockies. Uh, and he's he has a bunch of engineers on, on, on standby. Just repairing his building. It's not worth it, come on. There's like 15% health missing, oh okay. Well, he's got the eco to back it up, so it doesn't really matter, I think. Four yaks coming in for a strike. Four yaks is uh, keep that in mind. You want five yaks to burst an iron curtain or a missile silo. Four yaks is one too short. It's not gonna happen. Oh! Iron Curtain just in time. Beautiful. Very good timing. He didn't lose anything. And he is really cut into the Air Force of Chamberlain. Now there's... Uh, four Yaks trying for a counter, but they're not finding anything. That was not worth it. Those Yaks by, by Ramon were just wasted. He would be better uh, better advised at just getting a, a huge flock of them because... Uh, Paradrop, it's gonna get cleaned up. Because uh, what's really gonna happen with Yaks is they are incredibly susceptible to anti-air if they're in small groups, but if there's a large number of them, especially with the SAM sites. SAM sites, sites have, a, have a really low range. I think it's around like this. And their missiles track, but they come out very slow. So what that means is if you have a huge flock of yaks and they're, they're just flying, uh, let's say from here, uh, the SAM side is going to auto-acquire the first target and it's going to shoot two or three missiles into it and the yak is going to outrun the missile at first. Uh, two more heavies getting cleaned up. Nothing too big. Well, okay, let me elaborate on the, on the SAM thing. So what's going to happen? Uh, there are going to be three or four missiles in the air and they're gonna take some time to catch up to the yak and then kill it. Oh, demo truck! This is the beauty of Ukraine. Let's see how far he gets. Shit, does, does he have it scouted? Oh, yeah. Now he sees it. Ah, 
so sad. This could have been great. Instead, he traded it for one yak and three, I think it was three black tracks. Not worth. It could have been beautiful if he had managed to kill off all those shockies. Okay, so the Sam sites basically, the nukes ready by the way, Sam sites basically uh, make their missiles track and it takes an incredibly long time uh, for them to kill a yak. And in the meantime, the other yaks have just flown past. He whiffed the curtain, he whiffed the curtain. This is huge. He wanted to push in with, uh, with the mobile flag, take the brunt of the damage, draw the fire, and then send the shockies in. Now there's an iron curtain for Chamberlain, so this is this attack is thwarted. Also V2s. V2s are amazing versus clumps of infantry, as you can see. It's not gonna take any damage. Very costly, very costly for Raimondo. Absolutely not worth it. Okay. Chamber is getting this cut off. And I've missed the nuke. Okay. Not too bad. It killed it killed uh, Chamberlain's nuke. And it dropped his power. That's actually big. Uh, Raimondo has reverted to his light, light armor play. No more heavies from him. And I haven't seen any V2s from Raimondo so far. Which is kind of curious. Oh, he's going for, for naval control. Very good, very good. Uh, also, one thing about those late game engagements as he's preparing one more strike force. Uh, one thing about those uh, about those engagements in the late game, you don't really want to go for the army, especially against Soviets, because Soviets, their armies are really slow, even if it's just shockies. Shockies are decent, have decent speed, but they're still slower than any allied forces that, you, that they could muster. Yeah, so you want to target either the infrastructure, but, uh, like the production capabilities, or the economy, or the power. Either three of those is gonna suffice if you if you manage to kill it off, but you have to do it in uh, in one go, and you have to not let him let your opponent any chance of recovery. Uh, there are too many forces here. This is no, this attack is not gonna work. I feel he is backing it up with a with an MCB, but there are so many V2s here, and if he doesn't lose the V2s immediately then this is gonna spell bad news for Raimondo. Okay. Attack has commenced. Ah, it's been spotted. Iron Curtain, Iron Curtain, yeah, there we go. Now he needs to send them in first to take the brunt. Oh, power down again. This is huge, this is huge. But I don't think there are enough shockies to punch through this. Yeah, construction yard getting getting torn apart. The V2s are down. Power is down again. This is massive. I would, in, in, If I were in his place, I would target uh, the Iron Curtain and the economy. Uh, yeah, because I've run out of ammo. So this attack is going to get cleaned up once the power is back. Yeah, power is back. Okay, and he's kind of base creeping. Uh, we're going to keep the western part of the map. In, in the back of our heads. So it could be interesting. Some more shock division visions coming in. Man. By the way, shocks have the best one-liners in the game. That's uh, the real reason why I built them is not because they're brokenly overpowered, it's just because they have those cool one-liners. It's like, <laughs> need a job? They're fucking great. I love them. But they definitely need a health nerf so they can uh, act as kind of a backline support that dishes out damage because th their damage is fine. They're supposed to be late game units, but I hate them so much. <laughs> yeah, he knows what he's talking about. By the way, um, Chamberlain is really short on power. By the way, uh, at, at the moment, his Tesla coils are powered down. His Iron Curtain, the Iron Curtain is, is huge. I would rather power down this Tesla coil right now and have the Iron Curtain charge because there, uh, the Iron Curtain is so crucial for Soviet engagements. All right, let's get up his yak flocks. He's got, <laughs> look at this, five barracks, six barracks, uh, gives you like 35% production, speed reduction, which is amazing. Ouch, nah, just rifles. All right, both getting up their yak flocks. 
And again, yaks are poor, pure class cannons. On the par again. Come on. And Raimondo still has the nuke advantage, so he's ahead in this regard. Uh, the V2s are just horse firing at this point. Ah, uh, Paradrop. If he doesn't see this Paradrop, this could be massive because it, it could cost him all of his derricks. No, but he is built like an APP, so he knows the drop is there. It doesn't do anything. Well, goodbye, oil derricks, rip. Rest in peace. Uh, now Raimondo is opting for mass airfields, he just wants to get out those yaks quicker. They're kind of a one and done unit. Uh, it's, it's rare that a yak ever returns from its, from its service. Wow, that was some crazy micro. Usually uh, a yak cannot take out multiple infantry in one strafe unless you reassign the targets Im immediately, like with, in rapid succession, because they, they have a hard time acquiring targets on their own. They have a minimum range of, I think, one or two cells. All right, massive Yak Flock. And here are the missile submarines for Raimondo. This could get easily shut down by a couple of Yaks, but I don't know if you're doing it. Yak Flock going in. But this construction yard is not really what I would target. As previously stated, I would either go for the power or for the production facilities, which in, in this case it's not reasonable because he, uh, because Raimondo has like 10 barracks. So I would rather go for the power or for the eco. How many? One, two, three. Ah, the attack is commencing. Is the curtain up? Why do you need the curtain? Well, Raimondo's curtain is up, that's for sure. No. Chamberlain has to pull out. This attack has been unsuccessful. Look at this massive yak flock. Oh my lord. And that's it for the Iron Curtain. And that's it for the Missile Silo as well. So he has reset the nuclear arms race. This is massive. This is absolutely massive. And some of his yaks are making, making it home. Quite impressive. Ouch, ouch, ouch. He's not trading favorably, let's just put it that way. Uh, how is it looking in combat, in terms of combat? They're, they're completely even. Uh, Chamberlain is slightly ahead in the kills. Uh, doesn't mean too much. The economy. Look at this. Chamberlain, Chamberlain is floating 38k. He could do a way better job of producing. If we're being honest here. Yeah, he also doesn't mess infantry. Which is weird. He's kind of squandering two of his production slots by not building navy and not building infantry. And as a result, he has a float of 38k. I want to see vented yaks. Oh! <sighs> Jesus. At this point, the tech race has been reset completely by like five yaks. My lord. My lord. What a game. Uh, this becomes a war of attrition now. It's slowly turning into this really hyper late game where money is not that much of an issue and units are not that much of an issue. Nobody's taking the hospital. I'm wondering, no one is ever, ever contesting the hospital on this map. I mean, it's, it's nice to have at least, especially with the shock doctrine. And here is a... No, it's not really a base push, it's just a slight base crawl. But see, taking out the economy. This is going to force uh, Chamberlain to rebuild an ore refinery here, if he wants to, to gain anything from this. So this is how, how I would go, how I would go about things. Also you can see that flag tracks are not really amazing versus Yaks, they don't have the craziest DPS, they just have good range. Yeah, there's more and more missile subs. And Thing is, Chamberlain is doing nothing to contest those missile, uh, those missile subs. He's not sending yaks over there. He's not building missile uh, subs of his own. He's getting a forward conyard now. I'm surprised that the master communication failed. Uh, no, but I'm also surprised that uh, Raimondo has not built a single uh, V2 so far, because they're really good at at base pushing and in those war of attrition engagements. Basically, what do you do? You send a yak like in here, over here, have it scout uh, outside of the of the vision and attack range of the mobile flags. Uh, you let it take a shot, and you haul ass back to base. 
That's how it works. And it, it does incredible chip damage. And that's what those late game matchups are all about. Uh, surprisingly enough, Chamberlain hasn't, hasn't gone for the oil derricks. Wondering why. Hey, I'm using that. <laughs> okay, and now let's take a look at Raimondo's vision. He's got, he's got everything under control. He knows what's happening. He knows what's coming up. Now let's take a look at Chamberlain's vision. It's really restricted. Restricted to his own two halves of the island. His own half of the island. Jesus, my math is kind of off. All right. At the same time, I think Raimondo is... Wow. That's a yak flock. A murder of yaks, if you will. Uh, he's got two MCVs prepared. I think he's gonna start base pushing soon. So, Chamberlain has... Wow, how many conyards does he have? One, two, three, four, five. But the thing is, most of the assets for Chamberlain now are either in heavy armor or in Static D and, and Infrastructure. Oh, very nice. He's baiting the Tesla coil with his, uh, with his rifle infantry to give way for his own Tesla coil. Otherwise, the Tesla coil will kill, be killed off first. Yeah, and how's the power situation looking? Uh, okay, Chamberlain has now, <laughs> has now invested into more power because that was kind of his... That was his problem in, in the first big engagement that he suddenly went out of power. I think Remando is preparing a multi-prong attack. This is gonna be really exciting. This is one of those macro battles. It, it kind of reminds me of a, a StarCraft game rather than uh, Command & Conquer. Because to me, Command & Conquer was always like more a micro-intensive game. And StarCraft is more about uh, production, distribution, multi-prong attacks. So yeah, yeah, definitely. This is gonna be a base push gonna be exciting. Uh, another murder of Yaks this time for uh, for Chamberlain. There's no entire. I wouldn't go for the base defenses here. That doesn't. Uh, they don't hurt him at this point. I would go for the infrastructure. I think it's a mistake. And he has scouted, so he knows what's up. Yeah. Also, I would try to get one Yak to crash into those shockies. Would be hilarious. Nah. Not happening at the point. Okay, now look at uh, all those power down structures. Chamberlain is still having, uh, he's still struggling with the power man. He didn't pay his electric bills. Okay, now, nice try. Close, but no cigar. Okay. Wow, so many yaks. Okay, the first block of yaks is gonna go in. He's gonna target the power, I think. Or the anchor. Yeah. But beautiful play, beautiful play by Chamberlain. He curtains at the perfect time. Zero damage taken. Thing is, here's the backup squad. This is gonna get exciting. I'm, let's let's keep that in the back of our, of our heads. So, still some heavy armor here for Chamberlain. But uh, if the V2s are, if, if he gets the cleanup on the V2s, he can easily push through with shockies because they are amazing against armor. Okay, what was he kind of early? Here's the parabombs. Yeah, and that's how you use them versus infantry blobs or versus space defenses. And now the murder of Yaks is going in. Dual prog attack, beautiful. This is this is incredible. This is gonna take out all the tech. Come on, reface, retarget. This is massive. At the same time, the Shockies are going in, and Chamberlain doesn't even know how to react to this. Look, the Yaks are an auto-target. Sure, they're gonna chip away at this force, but... Wow. This was just beautifully executed by Raimondo. He had a game plan, and he stuck with it. Amazing. Now the V2s are getting cleaned up. Yep. Now, look at how those, how those shockies do against heavy armor. Ah, never mind, he's not doing it. Yeah, or base defenses for that matter. Woo. Down and out. Okay, 
here's the cleanup, but that was already, that was significant structural damage done to, uh, done to Chamberlain. I don't know if he's going to be able to recover from this. Uh, let's take a look at the asset. Asset sh should still be even. Yeah, he's targeting the power now. What about the assets? No, Chamber is ahead in the assets, okay. Uh, he's, yeah, because he's, no, he's earned less. I'm wondering, how is the bank of Raimondo doing? Of Chamberlain. Uh, shrank down a bit. Chamber's assets are kind of dropping at the moment. And see, that's what I was talking about with those late game engagements. It's a war of attrition and like individual units don't matter anymore. Another substrike. Individual units don't matter anymore. Oh, this individual unit doesn't matter though. It's a veteran yak. And those are so fast, if you micro them correctly, they can outrun SAM missiles. The SAM missiles do not track indefinitely, they just track for a really, really, really long, uh, long time. But like after, a, I don't know what, 30, 40 cells, they, uh, they lose their tracking. It's kind of hilarious. And Raimundo is being a bit optimistic with, um, he's not really guarding his, his Iron Curtain missile silo. By the way, for any, any newcomers wondering why you built them so close together, it's so you can you can iron curtain both of your tech structures if, if need be, which is really, really strong as Soviets. As allies, you don't want to do this. As allies, you want to spread your, your tech as far apart as possible. Because, yeah, lack of iron curtain. Uh, now the, the harvesters are taking some damage there. Like, wow, the subs are doing a number on the harvesters over time, obviously. Uh, Chamberlain has two armor companies left. Here's, okay, here is Chamberlain's Yax. My god, did you see this? It was like a split second too late. He saved the Iron Curtain, but he lost the nuke silo. So now, now Chamberlain has his nuke up. Where is it? Oh, there it is. But again, this can get outflanked so easily. So I, I don't feel that Yax, uh, that, that uh, A-bombs are really all that great in a Soviet late game mirror. Because the Yaks are just so fast, they can they can run through everything. Also, the Allied anti-air is different because it has a hitscan weapon and it has massive range. So you kind of don't get to do this against the Allies. Against the Allies, all your Yaks get shot down before you go there. Uh, okay, this paradrop is kind of doomed. Sorry to say. But if you dropped at the wrong place at the wrong time, wrong neighborhood. Let's check. How many dodges does the, does the rifle manage? One, two, three, four dodges? What the hell? <laughs> four times 50%. That's kind of. It's uh, kind of something. Look at the vetted yak. You can actually draw the fire with a vetted yak and then run it out and uh, let it outrun all the SAM missiles. It's so great. Okay, counter paradrop. Uh, why? I don't know. Just fuck the police. Yeah, this is something that Raimondo should have done for a long time now. Targeting all the oil derricks. I'm always unsure about how to rate missile subs because they can be amazing if all the, if all the missiles hit. But if they, if they spread, spread apart too far, they do nothing. Uh, okay. Calm down a bit. Chamberlain's Yaks are just screening for potential threats. And again, let's look into Chamber uh, into Remanda's vision. It's got everything scouted. How is Chamber doing? Not so hot. Chamber has rebuilt his army. I think in, in terms of net army value, he's kind of ahead now. Because all Remando has is this massive, massive shot blob. Tesla tech, he's going pure Tesla tech. I don't know, Tesla tanks are okay, but they need something else that's got heavier armor to back it up. Okay, another push. There are enough V2s to, to stop this dead in its tracks. I feel like, uh, let's zoom in. No multi-prong attacks going on, so let's just take a look. The micro hasn't been really good for chamber at this point. Cognac going down, but it's not a big deal. 
Jack Flux, and look at those electric balls of death. It's like disco, disco. Power down. Power down is huge. This is massive. Yeah, he has to call in his second heavy armor battalion. <laughs> look at the disco ball. I said disco, you say party. Disco, disco. Party, party. Beautiful. With a little bit more of heavy armor support, he could have he could have pushed even farther, I feel. But, yeah. Chamberlain is being pummeled from all sides. Like, he probably doesn't even know where, uh, where to, to draw his attention to first. It's like, ah! Sub, sub some north! Ah! <laughs> Yak strikes! Uh, and uh, Raimundo is really good at keeping up the pressure, like doing, uh, doing multi prong attacks. It's beautiful, I think. Good night, Harvester. The wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, is he going for the eco? Power! He tries trying to take down the power and the eco. That's what I was talking about earlier. The, you have to kind of re reface them to. Yeah! Nice Iron Curtain, perfect timing. 10 out of 10. IGN rates this 10 out of 10. Now look at the airfields. Uh, Raimundo doesn't, doesn't want to give up the pressure, he's going mass yaks and still mass shockies. Honestly, I don't know. Something tells me that next patch is going to have an overhaul of the shockies as kind of uh, backline damage dealers. They are so fast! Yeah, they are. Ah, the battered yak. So huge. Okay, so I don't think this brute force approach is going to work anymore, any longer in, in, the, in the next patches. That's at least how I feel. Uh, Look at them melting through heavy armor. This is just disgusting. But I mean, that's how they're supposed to be used, even if their health were to be decreased. Uh, honestly, Chamberlain's micro was really, really sloppy at the, in this engagement. Now he's trying to run them over. Uh, he gets three crushes, seven crushes. Okay. Here's the cleanup, but all the armor columns are down, and shockers are so cheap to produce. Next Yak Strike going in, my god! He is not letting go! Ah, uh, still going for the Iron Curtain. Iron Curtain down for the count. Missile Silo survives. Okay. One more Yak would have sorted this out. More legs are just sitting there. Uh. All right, wow, this has been amazing. And at the same time, look at what happened. <laughs> I completely missed this because uh, stuff is happening on, on multiple fronts. So meanwhile, Raimundo's nuke got taken out. Or has it? No, no, sorry. It's just been rebuilt in another place. And now he's commencing the base push. Uh, close, that didn't happen. I think this is gonna be a base push happening over here. Another base push in, in preparation. Well then, how does how's the income looking like? They both have a massive bank. See, this is late game. Units don't matter. Welcome to StarCraft. Also look at the tracking from those fucking SAM sites. Uh, this is something I dislike. Uh, the tracking, it's, it's kind of like, like having a tank with a Having a, a tank with a with a rotating turret, where the turret it takes so long to to reface and kind of acquire targets, uh, para bombs on the conyard. Here's the iron curtain. I hate how how unpredictable the uh, the uh, para para bombs are sometimes because you never know where the uh, which direction they're coming in from. Mass shock is, but I don't think this is gonna gonna hold for too long. It's gonna get the cleanup, and those yaks don't have any munis. All right. See, and paradrops are not fantastic versus, um, or, or para bombs are not fantastic versus conyards. Vetted yaks, yes, go. Nope, didn't happen. But look at this. Uh, that's the problem with the Soviet heavy armor doctrine. Your army is really immobile, and Raimundo is abusing this beautifully. 
because he's oh power down power down and this could be this could be a game changer here Raimondo is now uh, preparing another base push and what's up with the heavy armor it's on the other side of the map also he's camping the wolf factory now power is back but uh, wow so Chamberlain has, has diverting so much power has been diverting so much power away from his Tesla coils look at all those Tesla coils being powered down because man also mass missile subs they're gonna pose a problem I don't think they can reach the cornyard but it's okay look at this shock trooper spam Tesla coil spam camping the war factory this is an intense match I gotta say it's like been going on for 40 minutes wow and he's targeting the power he does exactly what he's supposed to do in, the, in this situation power down and yeah, Chamber has to divert more and more power away from his base defenses. Uh, and here is the next MCV. All he needs to do now is keep pumping out those MCVs and keep keep up the pressure. He's always gonna have a barracks ready, he's always gonna have a Tesla coil ready. And look at the power situation. Chamberlain is barely a hundred power uh, in... in uh, sorry, my, my English is failing me right now. <laughs> this match is so intense. Power down again. So yeah, basically Chamberlain didn't pay his electric bills. That's what's happening. Uh, Chamber has got enough in left in him for a for a last for a last yak counter strike. But here's the IC, and here is Raimondo's yak swarm. They're gonna take out all the artillery, all the V2s. So, and thus, the legend continues. So much damage potential wasted. Uh, look at this. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. He's powered down all the Teslas. And Raimondo keeps pressuring the power. This is absolutely the, the, the right course of action. Chamber down to 1,800 power. If we were to switch on all his base defenses now, he would, he would have like a power shortage of at least 1,000 power units or gigawatts or whatever that is. <laughs> the game is not good at specifying the... Okay, uh, he's got two SAM sites left, that's nice. Another Yak flock. Oh, those were the Yaks that have been stationed over here all, the entire time. So I think this is eventually gonna be it. 50 seconds to the nuke, mass missile subs, look at this. Holy shit, harvesters are some of the uh, of the heaviest, uh, of the most heavy armored uh, vehicles. Okay, Chamber calling the GG. He can't sustain this any, any longer. Raimondo's pressure has been too high. This was an amazing game. Okay, 92 unit uh, percent. 92% in the game, so it's still gonna go on for a while. I guess they're gonna chat it out for a bit. Holy, holy tits. Uh, this was an intense match. This was absolutely crazy, but thing is, he can't keep up with the production anymore. Chamber has four, five, six, seven, eight war factories, but he's not producing any. Yeah. Here's the nuke. The yaks are gonna go down. He's not producing any infantry, and his eco just got absolutely ravaged. So there is nothing he can do anymore, really. Because at this point, Raimondo has way more... Uh, yeah, way more uh, purchasing parity, and he has way more potential of pumping out units. Next, yak strike, just taking out all the power. Let's look at the power shortage, yeah. He's 300 short, and he's already turned down everything that he has. No, not everything, but almost everything. Mm, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up wrap it up very shortly. Also the strike force, that, that was a mis misguided waypoint, probably. Iron curtain still standing strong. More and more infrastructure going down. The missile subs are, are just lying in wait. Some heavies coming in. Two more MCVs, 
He just he just wants to make absolutely sure that chamber is out for the count. Last conyard. It's gonna be yeah, he's, he's selling out. It's gonna be a last ditch effort, but nothing can stop the push at this at this time. At this point in time, it's just over. Last conyard going down. Oh, parabombs. Are they gonna hit? Are they gonna hit? This is gonna be interesting. If he moves up to. Ah, okay, nice. He hit it. Sort of. But uh, see, Veta Jocks have such incredible amounts of health, it, uh, they don't even get, get one shot by freaking Parabombs. What? How did. Okay, that's a bug. Those are three yaks stacked up together, and they all landed on the on the same uh, on the same airfield. That was really weird. Double conyard here. Three more buildings to go. Para drops. Everything. Wow. And just look at the mass of the Soviet army. Yeah. So this is the power of Russia on on large maps. And that's GG. Okay. Honestly, this has been an amazing game. Thank you so much, Remanda, for posting this. Uh, look at the APM. Chamberlain what has been struggling. Yeah. You can see uh, by his APM, like he started out with 17 APM, and then towards the late game, he was just like, ah, I need to defend here, I need to defend there. And um, Remanda was just keeping up the pressure with like, with like clinical strikes. He was like sending an MCV to the west, base push. Sending an MC MCV to the, uh, to the northeast, base push. Uh, he knew what he was doing, and Chamberlain had a hard time just keeping up and being like, ah fumbling around with his base defenses and with his power. Beautifully executed. Let's look at the eco. Uh, both still, still having a bank. So uh, again, that's the thing. This is a large map. Eco is not going to factor in all that much because you're going to have an unlimited amount of money, basically. Uh, Remando is obviously going way more uh, towards the late game because he, he targeted the, uh, the refineries of Chamber. Assets. I think they were mostly uh, even in assets. The only thing was uh, Chamber had way more in, in base defenses and Remando had more, way more in his standing army. So combat. Oh, he was even he was even efficient in terms of combat, which kind of surprises me because he, he's done many suicide strikes with like 15 or 20 yaks at some point. Uh, units killed. Chamberlain has killed way more units because Shockies uh, you can mass them, and they are so strong. Like one set, one full cell of shockies costs you uh, two thousand, and they're gonna kill just about everything. So their per cell value is one of one of the highest. So if he, if he doesn't if they don't get one shot by a V two while they're standing still, they're gonna kill everything. Uh, the earnings, yeah. See the drop here. There's a steep drop when uh, when Romano started attacking the economy of Chamberlain. And eventually it was down to 4,800 a minute, while he had four times as much. Uh, amazing game. Oh, uh, one more thing I want to talk to, to talk about, guys, is the upcoming tournament. I'm gonna... Anyone can participate, it's gonna be in an FFA tournament, free for all. So I'm gonna cast this together with uh, Mr. Soscared. I've talked to him on, on the YouTubes, and he's a really cool guy. And we're gonna do a dual cast. Uh, I'm gonna put the link right here into the description if I figure out how YouTube works because YouTube works in mysterious ways. All right, so what else did I want to talk about? Yeah, uh, the discrepancy of Ukraine versus Russia on large maps. You've seen how shockies work, especially if you get a wetted ball of shockies. They're incredibly tough to stop. And Ukraine has nothing to really answer that with other than a demo truck, but the demo truck costs you 2,500, so you, you better damn sure make it worth. Uh, so I think this matchup on large maps is kind of slightly slanted in, uh, in Russia's favor. But uh, despite all of that, all of that talk, it's been an amazing match. I've been having a hard time keeping up. I, I guess for you as viewers, it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be like, Jesus, what's happening? Uh, fantastic, really good pressure, and I really liked casting this. Next match, oh, one more thing. Next match is probably gonna come out in five more in, in five days. Uh, but I'm gonna be in Croatia then. I'm gonna be on a sailing trip, so I'm gonna set it to like the, those YouTube automated automated releases, video releases. If I can figure out how to do this, if not, 
then you, you'll have to wait for, for another week for my cast to come out, next cast to come out. So that's it for now. I'm going to put the link to the attorney into the description. Anyone can participate, uh, people of any skill level. I'm going to put the download link to Open Array in the description for those who want to get started on this because it's an amazing game and it's absolutely free. Uh, so other than that, thanks for watching. It's been a fantastic game. Five Aces out. Battle control terminated.